Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the singing of the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Welcome friends, family, faculty, and my fellow classmates to the graduating ceremony of the class of 2018. We made it to an event that many of us have been waiting for since freshman year, or even since we started school. This is a very bittersweet moment for us all. It is crazy to think how, pa how fast these past four years have flown by. We are all ready to say goodbye to our high school career and hello to the new chapters in our lives. Looking back on these years, we have been through a lot as a class, so many challenges, whether they be academic, athletic, or personal. We have grown, matured, and developed ourselves into critical thinkers, self-directed learners, communicators, collaborators, and most importantly, caring and responsible citizens. A huge thank you to our teachers for not just doing your job, but for your going over and above. Not only do you help us to improve ourselves, but you sincerely care for each of us. Knowing when something is wrong, your effort to come and talk to us, to figure out a problem and help us on our way does not go unnoticed. We are grateful for your time and commitment to our class. Our personal supporters, our parents or guardians, we are here to, who are here to congratulate your little ones, who are not so little anymore. Though the teenagers you live with don't always show it, we are so very grateful for all the support that you give us. From holding our hands during our first day of kindergarten, or in my, or in my case, first grade, for giving us those little pushes out of our comfort zone, and now to helping us choose which college we will be attending and how we are supposed to live without you. Thank you for your love and guidance. Our advisors, boy do I know we are not easy to deal with. Your commitment to our class is beyond amazing. 
we appreciate you for taking your time to help us raise money so that we could have one last adventure as a class. Thank you for making it a memorable time that we will hold in our hearts forever. We love you guys. I am so proud of us all to have made it here. Being able to graduate with such passionate individuals is so overwhelming and amazing. We have supported each other, whether it's on the soccer field, baseball field, ski slope, basketball court, and of course the classroom. We have helped each other from studying for a test to figuring out what shoes we're going to wear to graduation. I'm happy we are here together to celebrate one of the greatest achieve achievements in our early lives. Congratulations, my friends. And I would now like to welcome up an amazing individual who is one of my best friends, Miss Lucy Laux. Thank you, Mariah, for welcoming us to graduation. Now that we are here, I have been tasked with entertaining you in my sal salutatory address. In preparing for graduation, I painted a clock where each hour was replaced by my school picture from kindergarten straight up through this year. The length of my hair, number of teeth, and fashion choices might have changed, but one thing is for certain. In the seven years I wore a small braid, it always hung down on the right side. Crazy looking back at when I was in elementary school and imagining this day as at least six years away, thinking that it would never come. Surprisingly, it did. We all made it up to this day, up on this stage, in this moment. We all had our own ways to get through the stress of high school. Aiden stated that the thing that got him through was removing the stress of doing homework by not doing it. <laughs> and trust me, he held his word. Three years ago, if you had asked me if I thought I was going to make a speech at graduation, I would have said no. Being a slacker at heart, I did not believe that anything was going to change, and Shirley would not have volunteered to say anything either. But things change. People change. Looking back at the people behind me, imagining them as freshmen, it is such a change. Phil was under five feet. Blake wore her hair in a permanent side ponytail. Brandon had a buzz cut. Mariah wore cowgirl boots to school every day. Some things didn't change though. Maddie R is still five feet. Liam is still into Dungeons and Dragons. Bailey still has a buzz cut. Amy is still as bashful as ever. One lesson I've learned growing up is that a big part of life is finding happiness. Happiness is a state of well-being that encompasses living a good life. I hope someday everyone in our class can be happy, just like Dylan. Walking into school every day and seeing Dylan's radiant smile lit up everyone's day in an instant. I bet if I look back at him right now, there will be one of those smiles on his face. <laughs> so everyone be happy like Dylan, who always looks at the glass as half full. Another important learning tool is to set yourself to something and focus on it, and you can be successful. When Daria came to Linwood freshman year, she knew what she needed to do to get everything done, and done well. I was jealous of her because she could actually study and retain information. She inspired me to work harder and I bet she did with many others as well. She is not the only one. William has known what he has wanted to do since age eight, which if you didn't know was game development. Since then he has created video games, robots, websites and is working on a mobile app right now. He wants to share his love with others, providing a place to learn more about these kind of things by even starting a game development club. There are those who believe high school is all about finding yourself. Jen has found her true calling, working with fire, following in her brother's footsteps. Ryan has found himself, and I'm so happy to say that he is comfortable around our, our class. Jared, after many, many years of being told he was a good singer, finally realized that he's good enough to continue and make music, music education his career. Those there are still those who believe that high school is also, also about realizing who you are not. Viking realized maybe he is not meant to be a Marine. His true calling is to be a physical education teacher. Maddie M decided that her future career path is radiology rather than being an x-ray technician. Sometimes you have to know that dreams take time. Quan will put his dreams to become a professional soccer player on hold in order to become an architect and build houses. 
For many of us, sports were a big part of high school. In fact, sports were such a big part of Keelan's high school career that he intends to pursue one in sports management. There were multiple milestones made in sports here, with a couple runner-up banners and a championship for ski team and a playoff win in soccer to a complete turnaround of the team in baseball. We are all teammates and we never give up. Kendall returned to the softball field after every injury she's had, putting her ankle at risk every time she got on that field. Weirdly enough, it was her arm rather than her ankle that was the final injury. <laughs> but even after that, she still came to every game and practice following, making sure she was still a part of the team even though she couldn't play. That was the way every athlete at Linwood played, especially the seniors behind us. As our time as high school students come to an end, some are just beginning. Here is some advice for the incoming freshmen, or anyone really who knows they aren't trying as hard as they could be. Do your work when it needs to be done. Have fun when you need to have fun. Connor Isles. Make sure to, you don't put too much pressure on yourself. Amber Tamulonis. Find what you like and focus on it. Dre Mooney. And Aiden, whose wise words of wisdom were to actually do your homework. What you heard is just a glimpse of these amazing people I call my classmates. There is more to these people than the words or phrases I used to describe themselves or their past. There are 24 of us, each one adding to the lessons we take with us when we head out for other places. Each of us supported by family, a special thanks to mine because where would I be without them, and our wonderful, wonderful advisors. The clock that I made is almost at 12, and soon we will all start over, back at one. We will never forget the memories and the people, for forever will it be a part of our lives. When this night is over, these people behind me will be alumni. So let's enjoy our last night as high school students of Linwood and let the night begin. Let's see here. Good evening. And get situated. Uh, my name is Jay Scambio. I'm the general manager of Loon Mountain Recreational Corporation, and I have the honor of kicking off the scholarships and awards section of tonight's celebration. Um, on behalf of Loon Mountain Recreational Corporation and our employees, I'd like to congratulate the class of 2018. Uh, on their graduation, and we wish you all uh, the best in your adventures that are uh, that are to come. So, I'm honored to present scholarships in the amount of a thousand dollars to four members of this this year's graduating class. To get started, uh, we're happy to award a scholarship to Blake Druin, who will be attending the University of New Hampshire, studying business administration. Come on up, Blake. We're also happy to award a scholarship to Brendan Harrington, who will be attending Keene State College to study physical education. <laughs> we would also like to award a scholarship to Jennifer Bamba, oh, excuse me, Bamba, who will be attending Vermont Technical College to study fire science. Uh, and also, we are happy to award a scholarship to Lu Lucy Laux, who will be attending Ithaca College to study mathematics. Thank you. Uh, 
I know what you guys are thinking. I'm uh, a little bit shorter, a little less hairy, and a little less loud than Marcus Corey. But uh, I'm up here on the on behalf of uh, Encore Thrift Shop to give out um, the Encore Servant Leader Memorial Award. Award, and we give this uh, every year to the students. Um, we're giving out two awards to the students that exemplify what it means to be a, a servant leader um, as we as we look to one who was the greatest servant leader. But we have two awards to give out in the amount of $1,500 tonight. And the first award uh, is going to Bailey Harrington. And the second award is going to Brandon Harrington. Congratulations, class of 2018. My name is Taylor Christensen. I'm the build manager for Ice Castles here in Lincoln, New Hampshire. And on behalf of uh, me and my crew, we'd like to congratulate the class of 2018. And uh, we have a uh, scholarship in the amount of $500 for Bailey Harrington. You'd like to come down? Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, class. You guys did make it, and it's been fun to watch you over these past few years. The Chamber has a strong commitment to serve our local community of Lincoln and Woodstock. Our Chamber would not be successful if it wasn't for the support of our business members, local clubs, community members, and students. When our committee reviewed the applications, one stood out above the rest. This young woman is a community leader. She rallies her teammates, gives back throughout the year, and is a supportive classmate. I'm going to quote something in her application. The people that help out in this community make Lincoln and Woodstock such a great place to be, whether it's just as a resident or passing through. And I hope someday I can make my future community as great as others have made this one. I'm pleased to present Lucy Lox with this year's scholarship for $1,000. We know that Lucy will be a great asset to any community that she's in. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to announce the winner of uh, this year's scholarship award from in-season resorts, Paula Brook. Uh, we took our time looking over the candidates' applications and we were very impressed with the caliber of student in this year's class. Um, I know many of these students since middle school, and it's amazing to see them grow up into these lovely young adults you see before you. Uh, time sure does fly. I wish each and every one of you all the best for the future. The community will miss you. Um, after looking over the scholarships, we decided to split our scholarship into two $750 um, scholarship awards. The first award goes to a young lady that is every bit uh, kind and pleasant as she is tough and determined. A great athlete who has had to overcome various leg injuries over her school years. She would always use her indomitable spirit to bounce right back. She also does a lot of work in the community. She is in my office every month asking for donations for the booster club or the graduation class, ponceras, mums, I don't even know anymore. Um, I don't even know what I'm buying half the time. <laughs> Think it might be time to move office or keep the blinds shut. <laughs> Congratulations, Maddie McDonald.
the second award goes to a young man that really is an incredible character. Uh, one of the nicest spoke, spoken young men I've ever came across. I had the chance to speak to him a few weeks back and he was so enthusiastic as he was telling me what he was going to be doing after school. Uh, so much passion. He'll do well in whatever he does. Um, I also have a wee story on him. A few months ago I was dropping off my son up at school up top there. I drove by the adolescents playing b uh, basketball out in the court and I remembered to stop for Miss McGinley. As I was up the top I saw a red car pulling around in the bus lane and I thought, I didn't know we were supposed to do that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> the driver in question wasn't working on his jump shot down at the court with the other lads, but he was taking his little brother to school, helping with his wheelchair and making sure he got into school safely, even giving him a little hug before he took off. He went to great lengths in his dissertation to explain how important his family was to him. He proved it to me even when he thought no one was paying attention. I've also heard he's quite a singer these days. Congratulations, Jared Avery. Good evening. Congratulations to the class of 2018 and a thank you to their parents, teachers, families, and friends. The Linwood Booster Club gives out two scholarships each year to students that meet the following criteria. They maintained an 80 or above average during four years of high school, participated in at least two extracurricular activities, show outstanding qualities of leadership and citizenship, represent Linwood School in a positive manner, in the community through community service activities. We've had the pleasure of watching this year's award winners grow up and develop into outstanding high school athletes and giving, stu and giving students of their time while participating in many of our Booster Club events. This year's recipients are Lucy Laux and Brandon Harrington. Congratulations to the class of 2018 and best of luck as you enter into the next phase of your lives. The Linwood Educational Trust was established by the Lincoln Woodstock Rotary in 1994 with the purpose of providing scholarship money to members of the senior classes. Over $250,000 in scholarship money has been awarded to Linwood graduates since the Educational Trust was established. Unbelievable. The Rotary continues to add to this fund each year through a variety of fundraising events, including the Corvette Raffle. Linwood graduates are very fortunate to have an organization in our community that generously provides financial support for post-secondary education. This year, a total of $25,000 will be awarded. Seven different seniors will receive a portion of this amount. The recipients are Bailey Harrington, Lucy Laux, Brandon Harrington, Maddie McDonald, Kwon T. Wing, William Lyons, and Keelan Nickel.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Gowan, and I'm representing the Lakes Region Board of Realtors. And uh, I'd like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to present this scholarship tonight. Um, a quick shout out to the Board of Realtors. I, I like to mention them and acknowledge them because there's a group of people who work extremely hard every year to create this scholarship fund and we uh, we donate twelve fifteen hundred dollar scholarships every year so it's it's a lot of work and I just like to acknowledge them um, this year the Lakes Region Board of Realtors scholarship goes to William Lyons Good evening. We're here representing the American Legion Auxiliary. This is Kathy D'Angelo and I'm Christine Lamontine. We have four scholarships to give out tonight. The first goes to Neela Nickel. <laughs> Keelan! <laughs> Brandon Harrington. Thank you, Christine. Madeline McDonald. <laughs> and Bailey Harrington. <laughs> Congratulations, honey. Thank you honey. so much. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, everybody, to the graduation night. Tonight, we have a $1,000 scholarship we're going to have to split up between two great people. The two great people have been on the Woodstock Fire Department for over two years now. And if I could just have them come down here, Bailey and Jen. <laughs> Jen. Bailey, don't go anywhere yet. Bailey, if you remember the time that we were doing training, with Jen putting on gear, who could do the fastest time? It goes me. Who won? I don't recall. <laughs> Jen killed him. Jen destroyed him. She did very well. Every time that these two go after each other, Jen always seems to win. She comes up on top every time. And Bailey gets very upset all the time. But to Sean and Bailey, we were responding to a call in Rumney one day, and the truck blew a turbo line by the Hatch Plaza in Plymouth. And the guys were all running around frantic, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? We have no tools to fix anything. And since I drilled Bailey, where every piece of equipment was on the trucks for two years, he says, oh, there's a toolkit underneath the seat. So they found that, never knew it was there, and Bailey saved the day. So hopefully with that kind of ingenuity and stuff, he will do fine at the Milford Fire Department in Maine, and make us all proud. Thank you, guys. Hug for your cousin. Good hug. Jen, good hug. I love you, man. Say bye to everybody. Hi, guys. Hi, Sean. Hi. I really 
I love that story about Bailey. <laughs> I was right one time. <laughs> I am Jen Witcher, and I am here to present a scholarship in the amount of $500 for, by the Nordic Inn Condo Owners Association to Brandon Harrington. I only have one. You're up. This certificate in the amount of $1,000 presented by Burndy's Lincoln Facility is awarded to Madeline McDonald. I thought about making her walk back to her seat, but decided not to. This scholarship, in the amount of $500 presented by Gordy's Fish and Steakhouse, is also awarded to Madeline McDonald. So if you didn't know, Dawson is a preschooler and he's a future firefighter, so he has two duties tonight. Um, I am Shannon Robinson and I'm the director at the Linwood Child Care Center and we're very proud to be able to offer a book award for the ninth year in a row. This past Wednesday, we celebrated our preschool class of 2018, filled with 13 children, children warring to go to kindergarten. We asked them the same question we asked many of you back in 2005. We asked them, what do you want to be when you grow up? Some of you wanted to be electricians, monster truck drivers, teachers, mad scientists, and Spider-Man. This year's recipient wanted to be a butterfly to watch over her family. We have watched her grow from an energetic toddler filled with mischief to a young high schooler who volunteered to help out with our trips to the summer theater, and who has taken her struggles as a young woman and her strengths and has proved, paved a path for her future career. We could not be happier to present this year's book award to, Dawson, do you want to holler it out? Yeah. Do you remember her name? Come here. Ready, I'm going to lift you up. One, two, three. Maddie McDonald. <laughs> Do you want to give her this, or do you want me to? You go. Congratulations. We are here to present the Stephen M. Bomba Memorial Scholarship Award. Before I get started, I'd like to think this is a uh, long-running joke my brother now has with me, so I have to go up and do public speaking once a year. <laughs> Real funny. <laughs> just nine years ago, Stephen walked across this very same stage to receive his diploma, just like all of you will do shortly. I would have never imagined at that time that I would ever be handing out an award in my brother's memory. Life short, make an impact. The criteria on the scholarships were simple. I mean, the verbiage on the packet seemed more um, litigated, or it was written by a lawyer, nonetheless. Um, but it really comes down to, are you going to school to, uh, for an education to pursue a profession that puts others in your community before yourself? Many of you will change majors, jobs, careers, leave town, come home, or just never leave. And that's okay. Right out of the gate, Stephen knew what he wanted to do. He knew where his home was, where his home will be, and wanted to do nothing more than to give back and help protect the community in which his family lived. It's hard to imagine, or really kind of put a tangible or quantitative level of impact that Stephen had on the community, 
This scholarship is just one of many ways in which Stephen is still able to have the impact and give back to the community. This year, there's two recipients that fell more in line with Stephen's direct career path. The first recipient, in the amount of $2,000, is Mr. Bailey Harrington. The second person, she's all right. <laughs> no, she's cool. It is, uh, I don't want to say following in the footsteps of her brother. I want to say more or less she's blazing her own trail and carrying his memory and his legacy with her. Um, this goes to none other than Jennifer. You can hug in public. <laughs> Um, the two recipients as well, we also have uh, some college farewell gift boxes, all your essential needs as you move on into your, uh, to your schooling. Congratulations. Some people out there know me, some don't. I am the new commander, Jim Crispin, of Post 83 in Lincoln. I've been up here about 25 years off and on, so I'm not really a newcomer, but I am a flatlander, so put up with me. This year, it's my pleasure to announce the Post has given three $500 scholarships, and I'd like to start with Madeline McDonald. The next one is Keelan Nickel. I've seen this one go off. Congratulations. And the third one is Jared Avery. And I'd like to say that was one of the best renditions of the national anthem I think I've ever heard. Good evening. My name is Andrew McDonald. My colleague here is Mark Harrington. We're here on the behalf of Post 83, Sons of the American Legion. We have three scholarships to give out this evening, but before we get to that, I would like to touch base on a gentleman that was here throughout my whole school career, and he's retiring this year, but he made it through my daughter's complete education. Mr. Baker, could you stand up for a minute? There he is. I know a lot of people in here that had him will remember a couple of games that we used to play called Lemonade Stand and the Oregon Trail. Um, and I want you to know that I wasn't the one that put the bubble gum in the dish drive, but I do know who did it. <laughs> I'm not ratting him out, though. Okay, so, uh, 
So being part of the Sons of the American Legion, this is probably one of the most enjoyable things we do. We get to give money to the students that are pursuing a second you know, education. Um, this year we have three awards, totaling $900. Two gentlemen and a young lady who are very dear to us. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add before yeah, we call Yeah, before we pass these out, uh, anybody hot out there? It's, it's hot in here. <laughs> very warm. Yes. <laughs> that it is. But, uh, let's see. Are you guys, are you guys out there? Yeah. Okay, so now... We might as well just give out the first scholarship in memory of John Riley, and that recipient is Bailey Harrington. Congratulations, John Bailey. Yep, sure. The second recipient in honor of Zachary Dovalock is Brandon Harrington. Yes! Thank you. And it gives me great pleasure to give this next scholarship in honor of David Dovalock. Dear friend to many people in this room, was to me and to this special young lady, Madeline McDonald. Thank you. Have a good evening. I'm speaking on behalf of the Linwood Education Association. We extend hearty congratulations to each member of the class of 2018. and wish all of you the very best in your future endeavors. This year, the Linwood Education Association will be giving awards totaling $2,000. They are given in recognition of the career of a retiring teacher. According to Andrew, that's me. Uh, 38 years of service to the students of the, of the district. Uh, as part of my retirement party, which was held a couple of months ago, I had it arranged so that attendees would be making a contribution to the LWA scholarship fund as a part of their fee for attending uh, and for the banquet. So a significant piece of the monies given tonight were made possible through me leaving, I guess. <laughs> Let's do this, ladies, first. The first LWA award goes to Miss Lucy Laux. Second, Miss Madeline McDonald. <laughs> Next, Mr. Keelan Nickel. And our final award goes to a soon-to-be Keen State Owl, Brandon Harrington. I'm here on behalf of PTSA, and I am giving out four um, book scholarships this evening. The first one's going to Brandon Harrington. Yeah, Brandon. Congratulations. Thank you, You're welcome. Next is to Keelan Nickel. Thank you. 
third is to Lucy Laux. Congratulations. Last, but certainly not least, Blake Druin. This is the 12th annual scholarship that the Lincoln Woodstock Friends of Recreation has given for a graduating senior at Linwood. We were excited to see that so many of this year's seniors volunteer so much within this community. But for the purpose of this award, we focused on Friends of Recreation events or Recreation Department programs that the applicants volunteered for. Congratulations to this year's $1,000 Friends of Rec Scholarship recipient, Brandon Harrington. I'll be brief. The two children sitting behind me just told their mother they need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> On behalf of Parker Lodge number 97, I'd like to congratulate the parents first and these guys. I've known these guys for a long time. They're a great group. Um, I think tonight's recipient uh, is going to be a good choice if he follows in his family's footsteps. Okay, we often hear about community service. And when I was going to school, it wasn't beaten ahead, but people did it, okay? And I, I want to acknowledge the people that did do it. If he does what his family does, um, he's going to be in good shape. His sister's a coach here at the school. His mother teaches in the school. His grandmother has been on the school board for years. His grandfather and his grandmother, uh, they started the first ski shop here right after Loon started. It was about 50 years ago. And they always gave back to the community. Quick story. I remember I wanted a first baseman's glove. Who is that? Uh, Charlie. Charlie, that's right. He's first base. Uh, I didn't have enough money. I was, I was looking at this glove, looking at this glove. And, uh, and he came up and he said to me, so, uh, well, how much money do you have? And I told him, he goes, well, I guess that's enough. And he gave me the glove. He did the same thing with the bicycle for me. And, and we have this same thing going now. Uh, in the ski shop that's going on now, which is Rogers, and they'll be coming up giving out something here very shortly. And it's a great community spirit here. So I just wanted to bring that up, that his grandparents are really good, and they treated the people really well here in the town. Okay, and so tonight's Parker Lodge uh, Book Scholarship goes to Keelan Nickel. Good evening. Congrats, class of 2018. It's been a ride. On behalf of the Linwood Alumni Association, I'd like to announce Madeline McDonald for our $500 award. This book award in the amount of $250 presented by the Upper Pemajawasset Historical Society and the Sargent family is awarded to Keelan Nickel. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm Sharmini Chow. Um, I'm here to present the Student Council Scholarship. The scholarship goes to an individual who showcases leadership through her high school career in sports, clubs, and the classroom. This person has truly fulfilled this idea of leadership and has personally helped me in a lot of sports. As, uh, as our leader in Student Council, she facilitated our meetings and helped us in making decisions for school spirit events and competitions. This scholarship goes to Lucy Laux. On behalf of David and Helen Rogers and Rogers Ski and Sport, I would like to present three scholarships of $500 to seniors who have, who have been involved with the Linwood Ski Team. This year's recipients are Viking Bartlett, William Lyons, and Lucy Laux. The 2018 John and Dorothy Lebrecht Memorial Scholarship is a new scholarship here at Linwood. John and Dorothy Lebrecht grew up in Lincoln and North Woodstock and graduated from the North Woodstock High School in the 1940s. The qualities of hard work, persistence, and teamwork drove everything that John and Dorothy did in their lives. They believe that these qualities, combined with higher education, would leave anyone to their full potential. We believe that William Lyons represents the essence of the John and Dorothy Lebrecht Memorial Scholarship, and we're very pleased to present it to him. Good evening, everybody. I'm here to hand out several awards this evening. The first of which is um, the Butch Ganya Memorial Book Award in the amount of $500. And this year it is presented to Madeline McDonald. and a second book award for Brandon Harrington. This scholarship, in the amount of $2,000 presented by the Woodstock Inn Station and Brewery, is awarded to Lucy Laux. I'm not as kind as Mrs. Krill. I made her sit down. Um, the uh, Howie Book Award is presented to Lucy Laux. <laughs> On behalf of the class of 2018, I would like to thank the Linwood community for providing this graduating class with a little over $54,000 in scholarships. Applause 
your generosity continues to provide our students an opportunity to mitigate debt as they strive to become productive and caring adults. To all of you here in the crowd and those, of, those who may not have been able to join us, thank you all for the love and hard work that you have provided throughout the years. There's a familiar saying that the days are long but the years are short. After our children are born, we blink and all of a sudden they have begun kindergarten. They contain all the hope and excitement that the future may bring. Their infectious smiles and curiosity help keep the rest of us young. We close our eyes a few more times and they have become the young men and women that you see before you. It seems as if tomorrow they may wake up to watch their own children on a graduation stage. And, gradu and graduation, what once seemed like a distance goal, will be rendered to memory. But, loved ones, try not to be sad, for this is a time of joy. And to you, the class of 2018, do not be afraid to close your eyes. For it is in these moments where we remember the past that has shaped us, to take those moments to enjoy the present and to dream of a life that will soon be realized. When I think back on this group, I remember just how long the days can be. Yet I can hardly believe that it is their turn to experience this rite of passage. We have before us a phenomenal group of students, and I'm not just saying that because so many of their parents work here. <laughs> Intelligent, talented, caring, protective, tight-knit, Sassy, silly, outrageous. I cannot begin to describe the impact that these students have had on this school and community. Never before has there been a group like you. And we're not likely to see a group like this again. So allow yourselves to close your eyes, enjoy the moment, and hold on to this memory. Just as we will hold on to the memory of this special group. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the class of 2018. And uh, we will now move into the presentations of gifts. Hello, good evening. Over the past four years, we've received, received help from so many individuals in our community. We would like to thank them for all they've done. Would the following please join us on stage? Tammy Ham, Mrs. Vance, and Mrs. Barnett. Are they not here? Take it. She said take it. Oh. Oh. Who's this Tammy? Who's this Tammy? I do. Oh. Did you want to go and see? So. Tammy uh, doesn't seem to be joining us, but uh, we'd like to say thank you for um, spending so much of your time with us to help decorate this week and always thinking of our class. Uh, Brenda, thank you for taking time this week to help organize graduation. Billy, thank you for helping us with graduation planning all year. <laughs> we would now like Ms. Parent, Mrs. Courier, and Linda McIntyre to join us on stage.
Mrs. Parent, thank you so much for allowing us to use your room for Winter Carnival and other meetings all four years of high school. Mrs. Carrier, thank you for letting us take over your room every Wednesday. It was needed. <laughs> And Linda, thank you for donating so much of your time to take pictures at almost all of our events throughout high school. Can Sally Nickel, Mrs. Creel, Mrs. Witcher, and Mr. Laux please join us? Okay, thank you Super Sal, Sally Nickel, um, for helping out with our class, especially during Winter Carnival. Thank you Miss Witcher for organizing Winter Carnival, always entertaining us and never saying no to our work no matter how late it is. <laughs> And thank you to Ms. Krill for speaking at Baccalaureate and for the many life lessons you have tied into your stories and ours. <laughs> thank you, Dad, for helping with events even though you have a really busy schedule. <laughs> Jeremy Avery, Mr. Baker, Mr. Courier, Jessica, and Michael Tamiolanos, please join us. Thank you for giving up your time to help me. Dad, thank you for giving up your time whenever we needed it. Mr. B, thank you for always supporting our class in a variety of ways and for being the best math teacher the world has ever seen. You'll be missed greatly. Mr. Courier, thank you for being a great first year principal at Linwood. We are so fortunate to have had you this year. Thank you. Mom and Dad, thank you for helping us whenever we needed it, whether it was waking up early to grill or sleeping in instead and helping clean up. <laughs> Can Debbie, Mark Harrington, Joe Bossy, and Mike please join us? Mike Donahue, or Bobby Donahue in place of Mike. Which Debbie? Debbie Ward. Debbie. Where am I? Where am I? Debbie, thank you for donating your time to help us with whatever it may be. You have spent countless hours of your time helping us and expecting nothing in return. Thank you. Thanks, Dad, for the endless love support you have given to our class.
Joe. Thank you for everything that you have done for our class because we all know that you do not have to help us, you choose to. Thank you for all your love and support throughout these few years and I look forward to many more with you. Mike, Bobby, thank you for taking time out of your personal life to drive us down to Myrtle Beach for our class trip. It was a big help and the ride was fun. Yeah, advisors. Uh, we would now like to thank our advisors so they could come stand up here with us. Faith, Bobby, Lee, and Danielle. <laughs> our advisors have been there through a lot. Danielle, Faith, Bobby, and our unofficially official fourth advisor, Lee. Through the lowest lows and the highest highs, you have cheered us on and always put us before yourselves. Your selflessness is something we all strive for, and we would like to show you our gratitude. Dear Mom, none of my classmates can say that they are your kid but you treat them the same. I cannot express how thankful we all are that you are our advisor and how lucky I am to be your son. I love you, Mom. Mom, thank you for being a great mom to me and to the rest of my class. You're an incredible person and I'm glad to call you my mom. You are a hardworking uh, woman. I know and I'll miss you next year as I move on to college. Love you forever and always. You're the real MVP. Oh. Oh. Oh, hey. Hey. He forgot this. Hey. Mom, I couldn't possibly thank you enough for everything you have contributed to the class. We are all very appreciative of you. Bobby, thank you for being such a dependable advisor. You stepped up even though you're a parent and became another mom to us. At this time, the class will be handing out roses to the individuals that are important to them and have made an impact on our lives.
This was a difficult speech, difficult speech to write. My usual process of writing, deleting, and rewriting wasn't working. My secondary method of writing multiple versions of the speech didn't help either. Maybe it's the 13 years that I'm supposed to sum up. The problem there is that I can just take the last four years, as that's when we came together as a class. So that excuse is out. I could be overcome with emotion, and I can't properly get the words. Nope, that's definitely not it. To be completely honest, I don't know why it's so hard. I can't find the words, but there's no good reason for it, especially because there's so much to say. With some high confidence, I can say that I've shared at least one good experience with everyone up on this stage. I could literally pick any memory and go on about it, and then another, and another, and continue like that. But that's not what I think my speech needs to be. This year, I became introspective. In my senior reflective essay, where I summed up the past four years, I went over the essays I had written those years. I know a few other friends of mine did something similar, but I decided to make that look back the subject of my essay. Each piece I went over felt as if it were written by a different person. In freshman year, William was naive and young and carefree. In the essay, and all its imperfections and cheesiness reflected that. In sophomore year, William was just as optimistic, but he was starting to figure some important things out. Junior year, I was definitely more similar to who I am now. Not only was my writing actually okay, but everything I wrote about, or, but everything about how I wrote and the personality I showed was finally me. As much as I'd like to say that the same experience could be shared by everyone else up here, it probably wouldn't be. People have ups and downs at different times, and all our lives are generally unique. What I can say, however, is that reading over these essays might have been one of the most enriching experiences I've had in the past few months. Going over how I used to think made me look at how I think now and who I am now. Being retrospective can change how you do things for the better. Something that we've probably all heard as advice at a graduation or commencement is that we shouldn't look back and keep moving it forward. We should look back, not stay there. Being introspective and retrospective lets you grow and learn from the mistakes you might not have realized you made when you made them. Looking inside yourself for your flaws and successes is a vital part of growth. That being said, you can't change posit positively just by yourself. You can drive it, but you can't just do it alone. Our families got us here, provided support, and helped us through tough decisions. For me, that was John, my mother, my uncle, and my aunt. Our teachers, by definition, taught us, but also provided an environment to, be effective, to effectively be taught and to be creative and critical in. I had Mr. Webster, Mrs. Krill, Mr. Baker, Ms. Barr, Ms. Shammy, Mr. Untersee, and Mrs. Smith for that. Our advisors all made sure we had an amazing four years and also made sure we survived each other. For us on stage, it's all the same. Faith, Bobby, Lee, and Danielle. 
when you look back, you can't help but be grateful for who's helped you to get where you are. Writing this speech was difficult. I didn't want anything average, nothing that has been done before, or filled with cliches, or had even one. My speech isn't anything sentimental or inspiring, though. It's a little weird, and it feels like I'm trying to give some awkward lesson. It doesn't exactly fit with the rest of the night, honestly. But I think that makes it even better. The speech is a little like me. I'm not someone who would fit into a class at any other school, but at Linwood, you kind of have to fit. And with our class, it wasn't something where I felt like I didn't fit, but was included anywhere. anyway. I actually fit. And I have to thank my class for that. They've made all of my years fun, frustrating, exciting, confusing, and everything in between. When I look back at, m at the time I spent with them, it's almost all good memories. Even when our situation wasn't great, we had, e we had each other to deal with what came at us. I'd like to end off with a quote from one of my favorite filmmakers, Stephen Subdick, where he subverts one of those cliches we hear all too often at graduations. If you love what you do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. Well, I disagree. No matter how much you love what you do, you'll always have to work. And you have to work hard. And sometimes, 15-hour days seem like a lot more work than love. But someday, when you're sitting with all the people you care about the most, all those hours you spent working turn into a moment like this. Thank you. Madeline Caprice Tanasia Rivera. <laughs> Philip Christopher Bomber. <laughs> Ryan Alexander Tremblet. Michael Clark. <laughs> Daria Zhao Jean Etchings. Dylan Thomas Good. Amber Elizabeth Tamalonis. Andreas Harold Mooney. Virginia Brooks. Connor Douglas Isles. Lucy Charlotte Laux. Yeah. 
Viking John Bartlett. Kendall Ann Savoy. Andrew Nickel. McGinley. Russell Harrington. Thanks, Phil, for moving the table. Appreciate that. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for being here. Tonight is a celebration. It's a celebration of the accomplishments of the young men and women seated to my left. Graduation brings out many different things, as it marks the end of one part of the journey and the beginning of the other. But as we are here tonight, these accomplishments did not occur in isolation, nor did they come without support. Each one of us here did not get where we are all by ourselves. So I would like to take a moment to ask the soon-to-be graduates to do me just a small favor. Didn't think you'd get off easy, did you? So the first thing I want you to do, and this is going to require a little audience participation, is I want you, each of the graduates here, to look out in the audience and find that person or people who have helped you along the way. 
give them a little wave. You can wave back. <laughs> you can applaud if you like. You see, those are the folks that will be with you no matter where your journey leads. So I'd like to ask you to do two things as you leave here tonight. Number one is to pursue your interests and passions with enthusiasm and embrace when those interests and passions may change. Be willing to grow and learn every day. Never stop. Number two is surround yourself with people who will care and support you throughout your journey. Many of them are here tonight. And be willing to reciprocate that care and support for them. It is those bonds that will serve you best along your way. Finally, as you, begin the, you began the day as students and leave the day as alum, know that this place, our school, will always be there for help if you need it. We are all very proud of you for what you have done, but more importantly, for what has yet to come. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2018. At this time, I would like the graduates to please move your tassels from one side over to the other. Something we must learn And we are led To those who help us most to grow If we let them And we help them in return Well, I don't know if I believe that's true I know I'm who I am today Because I knew As it passes a sun Like a stream that meets a boulder Halfway through the wood Who can say if I've been changed For the better But because I knew you I have been changed We will never meet again in this lifetime So let me say before we part So much of me is made of what I learned from you You'll be with me Like a handprint on my heart And now whatever way our stories end I know you have rewritten mine by being my friend. Like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind off the sea. 
Like a seed dropped by a sky bird In a distant wood Who can say if I've been changed for the better But because I knew you I have been changed for good And just to clear the air I ask forgiveness for the things I've done you blamed me for Well now I guess we know there's blame to share And none of it seems to matter anymore Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes a sun Like a stream that meets a boulder Halfway through the wood Who can say if I've been Changed for the better I do believe I have been changed For the better And because I knew you Because I knew you because I knew you, I have been changed for good.
got to find the right one here. <clears throat> Thank you all. Oh, sorry. Let me restart. <laughs> Thank all of you for coming to this event I've dreamed of since freshman year. I am glad that you all have come to bear witness to a rite of passage into the real world. This is probably what you all are thinking right now. Here is some kid or young adult who is going to get up, say some long speech, litter the cliche phrases just like at every other graduation, and maybe you are right. Our journey at Linwood started in 2005, where kids reluctantly let go of their parents' hand to walk into a mysterious building. I thanked God that we were directed to the playground for a few more minutes of freedom. With all joking aside, I had no idea how much these two buildings would mean to me. Being in the elementary school put the foundation of our learning and even more importantly, our morals into place. All of us could run around freely without the weight of the world bearing down on our shoulders. From kindergarten to fifth grade, our numbers grew and depleted as kids came in and out of our class. We were lucky to later have some of those kids return back to our class and add to the character and uniqueness of our outfit. I was happy to move into the bigger building and move on to middle school, but some were not as hopeful as I was. Middle school was the next obstacle that we had to face, with new teachers, harder work, and a new environment to get accustomed to. All of us were given more responsibility and ownership in middle school making individuals decide what kind of student and person they wanted to be. Before eighth grade came to a close, the coveted eighth grade camping trip was almost in our grasp. I had anxiously waited for this privilege with the rest of my classmates, being told that Fort Ticonderoga was the destination. We all climbed on a bus, only slightly better than our own school buses, and were bound for the edge of Vermont, just on the border of New York. We were staying at a campground where we had an entire field and set of latrines to call our own. We did not know at the time that this would be the location where an incredibly strong bond would be produced. Continuation was to follow soon after and was a small and quick graduation from our middle school years. High school was now upon us. The months of work-filled, sleepless nights and competitive varsity sports were now a reality. High school was the location where we entered as immature middle schoolers and came out as adults. It seems like an unlikely change, even as I'm saying it, but it is truly the case. Freshman year was an eye-opener due to the amount of work and further responsibility that was put upon us. We had the privilege of having more new classmates that had come in the hopes of only high school education, but were met with so much more than that. The teachers had gotten used to the new bodies that had taken residence in the open desks towards the middle of freshman year. And had even memorized our names. Freshman year ended quickly, as many of us hoped it would, due to two things. Being at the bottom of the food chain is not always fun, and because of the disconcerting awkwardness. Sophomore year was where many of us found our footing and shaped into young adults, figuring out how to be self-directed and how important that would soon prove to be. Sophomore year is where I noticed I changed the most, having that light bulb finally turn on and letting me know that was, or excuse me, what was a good or bad decision. But I can't say that a lot of trial and error did not occur as well. Many of my classmates had done a lot of maturing as well, and I realized this when most of the students were not laughing at the word duty. <laughs> Junior year was one of the most stressful years, for students now had to decide what they were going to do next year, where they were going to spend the next four years of their new adult life. There were no decisions set in stone just yet, but they soon had to be made for the following year. This was also the same year that most of my classmates had learned that being a caring and responsible citizen was important and a crucial life skill. A government class that was required for all students set this skill in motion. The last year of high school had come more quickly than the last, and our future outside of Linwood would be soon upon us. The stress of being accepted by colleges or universities or just simply preparing for the workforce made us older. 
Scholarship packets went out, and many hours were spent working on these important documents. Throughout all the final cramming of subjects and stress was the talk of graduation. More and more acceptance letters arrived, and we congratulated students on their decisions. Now it was up to them to choose which school it would be. The work, the classes, the teachers, the friendships, the baseball, basketball, and soccer games, the conversations, and the transition from youth to adult in this very building was ending. It is time for all of us to say goodbye to the school, but not to the people or the friendships or the bonds that we have made. Wherever we go and whatever we do, remember that Linwood is where it all began. The Lincoln and Woodstock communities are also to thank for our accomplishments. In the song, Take Me Home, Country Roads by John Denver, there's this line. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Be thankful for these very mountains that tower around us. These mountains have shielded us from the outside world, keeping the bad out. These very mountains aided in the care and nurturing that we have received and used to grow into incredible individuals. Those mountains are old, yet we are young and full of life. So go out and live your life. Make new friends, but never forget about your old ones. Find that job you love and stick with it. Find that special someone that will only grow your capacity for love. Be kind always. Life is too short not to be. Most importantly, have fun. Live the life you have always dreamed about. Congratulations to all of you. I want you all to know that I am proud of who we have all become. I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. We are all finally graduates of Linwood Public School. How cliche was that whole speech? Well, may I present to you the class of 2018. <laughs>